Welcome to the TeacherCast Educational Network, coming to you from the TeacherCast studios since 2011. Join us each week as we bring you the latest educational news, ed tech updates, and hottest interviews with today's most influential leaders in education. And now, for your host, Jeff Bradbury. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Teacher Cast Educational Network. My name is Jeff Bradbury, and thank you for joining us for the Jeff Bradbury Show. This is episode number three. If you are a content creator, a blogger, a podcaster, a speaker, an author, anybody looking to grow an email list, this is the podcast for you. Welcome to episode three. Today, we're going to be talking all about 10 tips, 10 expert tips to help you build your EDU brand. And with that, I want to say greetings from sunny Miami. We are down here this week at FETC, and it is absolutely amazing getting to see so many dear friends, having a chance to check out all the great things at the vendor tables and check out all of the sessions. Of course, I just happened to give our our educational podcasting workshop yesterday, a three-hour event that was amazing, had a chance to work with so many great teachers and continue to share my passions for educational podcasting. And down here, you know, the buzz is all about technology and education, but there's so many great educators doing things out here. I had a chance to sit down with many of these people and ask them about their brands. What has made them successful? How do they define success as a brand owner, as a as an entrepreneur? And today I want to share with you guys 10 tips to help you on your journey to building your EDU brand. But before we get to that, I want to tell you guys that we now have almost 50 educators that have signed up for our TeacherCast 90-Day Email Marketing Challenge, a free online course and motivational opportunity to help you get your email list started, grown, and become successful. You can head on over to buildyouredubrand.com and sign up for free. It's, of course, put together in two different spots. We've got a 14-day online course that goes directly into this month-and-a-half-long mentorship, if you will, with me. I get a chance to work with you and help you and figure out where you are with your brand, help you choose the best email platform, put your website together, gain subscribers. My friends, if you're looking to grow your email marketing in 2020, go on over to buildyouredubrand.com and check out our TeacherCast 90-day email marketing challenge. Sign up. You won't be disappointed. Everybody so far... Uh, I've been talking to on the challenge has been having a great time. And I even heard from somebody, I'm not going to say his name, but his initials are DK was extremely excited that since starting the challenge has already gained over 50 subscribers to his email list. So congratulations, DK, or I should call him soon. Dr. DK, you know who I'm talking about. We would love to have you guys join the teacher cast 90 day email marketing challenge. And again, Thank you guys so much for making this show a part of your professional development. Last week, we had an amazing episode two, and we talked about our five rules for professional and personal brands being hyper-focused, authentic, having a story, being consistent, and living your brand. And I want to say thanks to, again, I'm going to use initials, SF, who who found me on Voxer and left me an amazing like two or three minute long Vox saying how much she loved the episode and liked the story. And I want to also say thank you to TC from the Teachers on Fire podcast who decided to go over to Apple Podcasts and leave us a nice review. Guys, thank you so much for supporting the show and again, making TeacherCast part of your drive to work. But today it's all about 10 tips. Again, we had a great time at FE, or we're having a great time at FETC. And, you know, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the things that everybody has in common. You see these authors, these bloggers, these speakers, these keynoters, and they all seem to have some things in common with each other and I wanted to break them down today so let's get started. Number one, when you're looking at building your brand, when you're looking at putting something together, when you're looking at creating a product, a podcast, a blog, you need to know what your target audience is. You need to know who you're speaking to. Often, We figure out who we want to sell to, who we want to market to. I even suggest putting a drawing of that person on the wall. I even suggest putting their name on somebody. Every day I I turn on my podcasting mic, I speak to Bob or Mike or whoever. 
I'm also going to recommend when you're creating that target audience, do it early in the process. So many content creators start off and say, well, I'm creating this for all educators and I nah, way too big of a thing or I'm doing this for all tech coaches. No, it's way too big also. Identify your target audience. Know exactly who you're trying to hit and how you're trying to hit that person and make that 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 avatar early in your in your brand building career. Make sure you know who you're doing. The question often comes up of how do you grow your network? And I'll say this a lot on this show. Don't focus on building your network. Don't focus on growing your following. My suggestion for you, my friends, is spend time talking to one person, writing to one person, speaking to one person, having a keynote address for one person. If you can get one person, that one person is going to turn into five to 10 to 100 to 1,000 to 25,000 to a stadium. Know who that target audience is. And once you know that, you need to show them that you care about them. You know them. You know their likes. You know their pain points. And you're able to answer their questions. And after all, they're going to figure out that they're soon investing their time and energy into you, not just the content. I mean, think about it. Is there a podcast that you like to, to listen to that no matter what the topic is, you're listening to that podcast? It's probably because you're invested into the host or into the show. That's what you want to get with your content. Create that target audience, speak to one person, and everything else will follow. The number two tip I always want to recommend is to be an expert in the industry. And I got to tell you, this is something that over the last nine years I have struggled with. And I am finally in a good spot now with my career. You know, I started off as a music teacher for 16 years. And as I was building TeacherCast, I was an orchestra teacher. And I was going into all these conferences and meetings with people and companies. And they said, you're, you're, you're this tech person. What do you do? And I said, I, I conduct orchestras. And then they always had this pause. And they're like, but, but you do technology. How did you get into this? Which seriously is, is a great segue into this story. But now you can look back and say, well, I was a tech coach at this school district where I did this, and now I'm a tech coach in a school district where I'm doing that, and I'm now teaching broadcasting. I'm, I'm, I'm actually a podcasting teacher. So this is why I have the expertise to talk about audio and video and Google Docs and, and OneNote and all these different great products because this is actually what I'm, I'm an expert in. I'm doing this with students. Now, the third thing I want you to remember is all of these great brands, they're creating content. They're not just creating content for the sake of creating content. They're creating content worth coming back to. Now, if you close your eyes and you think about your Facebook stream or your Twitter feed, I'm sure you can think of blogs and podcasts and whatever else out there where you go and you look and you go, this is great, but I, yeah, so what? Or you look at it and you go, would I come back here? We'll talk about things like bounce rate and your SEO in a few episodes. Don't worry. We're coming to the SEO talk and about websites in a few weeks here. But thinking about the content. And that's one of the reasons why on TeacherCast, I try to keep focused content. But I also try to keep a variety of content for my audience, right? I have short form, I have long form, I have giveaways, I've got audio, but it's all focused on asking you guys to come along on the journey with me, asking you guys for comments, for feedback. And, and by the way, here's a free this or here's a template for that. Trying to create content worth coming back to, I got to tell you, it ain't easy. But if you identify your target audience and you come up with all the different things that they need, all we have to do as content creators is create the answer for those questions. Think about it. When you go to Google and do a search, you're not searching for answers. You're searching questions. How do you brush your teeth? How do you park your car in a handicap? I don't know. Where I'm going. Never mind about that. But all those different things, these people that come to like, know, and trust you, they're looking for you to have the, the answers to your questions. So create the content worth coming back to. 
The fourth thing is to know the value of your content. Look, we're creating content maybe with the intent to help people, maybe with the intent to grow an audience, but maybe with the intent to build some clients, to get some income coming in for the work that we're doing. Know the value of that. Know when it's good to put stuff out for free. Know when it's good to put out stuff under a membership and know when it's good to say, nope, this is a paid product. I'm going to go to Shopify or Teachers Pay Teachers or I'm going to create an online store on my website. All of those things have value and so do you. Know when your time is, is worth having a great conversation and knowing when your time is worth, you know, some kind of exchange of product or goods in that. Having a value around your content is really, really important. And I so it's so hard here as teachers, right? We want to give everything away for free. And if somebody says, well, this is, this is going to cost you a dollar, there's a lot of people out there that go, why would you charge a dollar? You're a teacher. Do it for free. But we all know that that doesn't pay for the triplets, right? And so making sure that we have a value around the content is just as important as making sure we have content worth coming back to. The more you give, 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 the easier it is to then put your hand out and go, all right, but wait a minute, this stuff here is premium. This is what it's going to take to access this content, whether it be an ebook or a digital good or a, a, it's an hour of your time on a webinar or anything like that. The fifth thing here I want to talk about is leveraging your PLN to evangelize for you. And what could that mean? That could mean having your friends, your colleagues on your podcast, building a Twitter chat, creating something that others are going to put out there, show off like a t-shirt or a sticker or sharing a video or making a graphic on Twitter, anything like that. I am totally in awe, and I'm not going to say names. We all know the people out there. I love what some of these educators are doing out there to build brand awareness through their T-shirts, through their books, through their edu gifts, through their uh, podcasts, anything that we can do to kind of spread the word about what we're doing, about our brand, about the content, about where to find us. Any way that we can leverage, or I should say crowdsource, our brands, the, the more good or the more better, I would say at that one. Make sure that you've got something to give and, and create it in a way that other people are going to want to, right? I mean, there's brand ambassadors for major companies. Why not create brand ambassadors for your company? How do you do that? We'll tackle that on another future episode. Moving on, number six, I always want to recommend to focus your message where your avatar is. Don't chase your target audience. Let me say that again. Focus your message where your avatar is. Don't chase your target audience. A couple of days ago, I had a chance to interview somebody for an episode that's going to be coming up in a few weeks. She was a personal trainer. She decided to get into the entrepreneurial spirit, and she created a business for herself. And her business is to help women over the age of 40 stay fit, stay mentally strong, stay healthy, eat a good balanced uh, life, all of those amazing healthy things. And I asked her about her social media, and she says she's on Pinterest, but she's mostly on Facebook because that's where her audience is. That's where women over 40 are, on Facebook, on her blog. They're not on Twitter, right? So, And they're on Pinterest because that's where a lot of people put recipes and diet tips and exercise videos and stuff like that. So it doesn't make any sense for her to spend time on Twitter. That's not where her avatars are. So don't go chasing somebody in a spot where they're not. Stick your guns down and figure out where your target avatar is. For a lot of educators, it might be Twitter. For a lot of educators, it might be YouTube or Instagram. Figure out what kind of content you need to create to attract people to your website, to your brand, and build a platform around there. One of our good friends, I'm going to name him TC, He's sometimes on fire. He's building an amazing brand around Instagram. And 
he has created some videos and he's starting to do live streams and he's starting to really build his brand on Twitter uh, and on Instagram. And I think it's absolutely fantastic. And even the other day, he came out with a great video all about what he's proud of on his brand and he he put it up on YouTube. It's an amazing thing when you figure out and finally say, I'm going to focus on this platform and this platform, but I'm going to take all the noise over here off. I might be losing some customers, but all of my avatar, the people that I'm, I'm, I'm hyper-focused on are in this area, and that's where I'm going to be. But with that said, the seventh thing I would recommend is to spread your message near and far. We just talked a little bit about social media, but let's look at where we are right now. We're sitting here in Miami, Florida at FETC. I am having a great time talking about podcasting and brand building and ed tech and Microsoft. And and look, I'm, I'm hundreds of miles from my home at a big conference. But I'm also looking forward in a few weeks to getting to Ed Camp Southwest Connecticut, where I'm going to be able to show off locally all about podcasting and broadcasting and Google and all these other wonderful things. But I also like doing the podcast here from my studio. So when you're looking at building that brand, don't just think local, don't think national, think all around. What can you do to build your brand local, wide, near, far? Find an ed camp, find a teach meet, find some conference in your area and go out and and, and talk about those topics. Be a presenter, meet people. If you're into web design, go to a WordCamp. Try something a little bit different, both in the space and out of the space. I have a good friend who was asking, should they go to the Pat Flynn conference? Yes. Go to those conferences, meet people, figure things out, get out of your box, and then figure out how to take all of that stuff and build your brand through new connections, through new channels, and through a new set of eyes. And we just talked about my friend wanting to go out and, and do the Pat Flynn conference. The, eight, the, the ninth thing here I would be saying, to sorry, the eighth thing here I'd be thinking about is having a mentor. Finding a PLN to actually sit and build this together with you. Be able to, to throw things down. Not be afraid of criticism or talking. I have an amazing PLN on Voxer. There isn't a day that goes by that we don't have 50 to 100 different chats back and forth about everything under the sun from um, SEO to to email marketing to to graphic design to conferences to speaking. You name it. I love my Voxer. And if anybody out there is listening, guys – I and girls, I really appreciate you. And and you guys not only are the reason I'm doing this show, but you guys are my mentor. And I love the fact that we have this thing together. Now, the ninth thing is don't be afraid of failure. Don't be afraid to try something new and then make a left turn or make a right turn. It's important to put yourself out there. Any entrepreneur is going to tell you that anytime that they go in a different direction, there's some risk. There's some scariness going on with all of this stuff. But don't be afraid of failure. So just to wrap up, number one, identify your target audience early. Number two, be an expert in the industry. Number three, create content worth coming back to. Number four, create value around that content. Number five is leveraging your PLN to evangelize for you. Number one, two, three, four, five, six is to focus their message where your avatar is, but not chasing it where it isn't. Spreading your message near and far, having a mentor, not being afraid of failure, and finally the number 10th one, and this is the secret to my success, and this is the secret to so many successful people that you know, include your family. It's tough. We go out to our day job, we drive home, we've got the family thing, we, we put them to bed, we open the microphone, we podcast, we blog, we write, we, we content create. We are creative people. But include your family. Last week, I had an amazing opportunity to go to my first ed camp with one of my triplets. It was a great time. He had a chance to spend the day with daddy. And I had the chance to see him play on his brand new Chromebook and he was showing people how to do it and he was writing things down and he was making drawings. on. It was an amazing opportunity that I had to spend with him. Include your family on your hopes, your dreams, your goals. 
And you know what? If you teach them a little bit of SEO to do some blogging work for you, that's certainly not a bad thing, right? I know the triplets are going to love learning how to do Final Cut. So number 10, include your family in everything that you do. Because after all, our time here is very, very limited. So make sure that everything that you're doing has a vision, has a focus, and that you know where you're going with things. And if you're still looking for help, my friends, I am here to help you guys build your EDU brand. And I would love to take the moment and work with you. There's a lot of great ways that you can do that. You can, of course, go on over to buildyouredubrand.com and you can click on the coaching button. I am happy to spend an hour with you guys talking through your email list, talking through your brands, talking through maybe a speech that you have. I, I've, I've got a teacher that just reached out to me and she says, I'm going to be doing a major keynote in a few weeks. Can you help me write it? I love doing this type of work and I want to help you guys out because we're all in this game together. So check us out over on teachercast.net and especially on buildyouredubrand.com. This is episode three. Next week, we're going to do a little bit of Q&A here on the podcast. And my hope is that by the time we get done the conference here, I'll have some cues from people at the conference and I'll have some A's from people here at the conference. And we're going to see if we can put together a nice show for you guys to wrap up January. In February, we're going to really, really launch this brand, launch this platform. And we've got two different types of shows we're going to be bringing in. The first one I like to call Five Ways That Do. So check out those shows. I've already got recorded five ways to build your brand on LinkedIn through logos, through your podcast art, through your website, through audio. If you're looking to learn how to do specific things on specific topics, I'm, I've got a lot of this great content coming from you. And I've already been recording some great shows with edu influencers called, Hey, how did you build your EDU brand? Where we get a chance to talk to people and really d deep dive into how did they create a platform for themselves and I got to tell you, I ask them the hard questions. So that's what's going to be happening over the next few weeks. Don't forget to head on over to buildyouredubrand.com and check out our TeacherCast 90-day email marketing challenge and get your emails started, focused, and targeted at the right avatar. You are going to be thankful and love this course. I promise you, it is completely free. It is my gift for you. And lastly but not least, don't forget to check us out over on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, and soon to be Spotify. Smash that subscribe button. And don't forget to tell all of your educational entrepreneurs that this show exists. We would love to have you guys on the ride and become subscribers of The Jeff Bradbury Show. And that wraps us up today for episode three of the Jeff Bradbury Show. My name is Jeff Bradbury, reminding you to keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions on your platforms. You've been listening to the TeacherCast Educational Network, hosted by Jeff Bradbury. Please reach out to the show with all of your questions on Twitter at TeacherCast or online at www.teachercast.net. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss any future episodes. And please take a moment to write a review in the App Store.